So you want to bring your characters to life by adding a little bit of animation. But how in the world do you go about doing that? My name is John Bryant. Stick around and I'll show you how to make it fun. A couple of things before we get started. First of all, this channel isn't always going to be about making cutouts. And secondly, the cutouts don't have to be for Christmas. They can be for Halloween or a birthday or Easter or Valentine's Day, whatever you want to make them for. It's not my purpose in this video to show you how to make a character out of Coroplast. There'll be a link somewhere around here that you can click on. That video will show you how to make one. The first thing I want to point out is that there are two different ways of attaching appendages, such as an arm. In the case of this character, the arm is attached to the front of the character, and in this case, the arm is attached to the back of the character. Now, in my opinion, it's a little bit easier when you're attaching an appendage to the back side of the character because you can hide a little bit of the mechanics. But I'm going to show you how to do both the front and the back side. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be showing you how to make the characters in this video, but what I am doing is taking some old characters that I made several years ago that were animated. I'm going to deconstruct them and show you what I did to be able to animate them. One thing that I do want to point out is when you're making the character, make sure that you make it in two separate pieces. You're going to have the body of the character and then you're going to have the appendage, in this case the arm. So it's got to be two separate pieces and the body has to be a whole piece underneath of where that appendage is going to be. So there might be a little bit of drawing that you have to do. There's usually not a whole lot and it's usually uh, just connecting the one line to the other. That's for the case of an appendage, or in this case an arm, that is on the front side of the body. When you're doing an appendage on the back side of the body, the lines are already there. What you have to make sure you, you do is on the arm that you have created separately, make sure you add a little bit extra to the back side. And I'll show that to you in just a minute. I've turned around the character that has the arm connected on the back side of the frame. As you can see, it's connected at a pivot point, which is a bolt that goes all the way through from the front to the back, and the arm can be animated to move up and down like the character is waving. I also want you to notice that in the original drawing, the arm would have stopped about right in there and gone along with the body. But what I did when I created it, I added a bunch of extra material on here so that I could work with it on the back side, be able to attach the arms and the uh, mechanism to the motor to, in order to be able to animate it. One of the main things that you have to remember uh, in making an animated character is that you have to build the frame so that one of your pieces of the frame structure, the wood, is directly behind the pivot point so that you can put your bolt through the appendage, the body, and the frame itself. The reason that's so important is that the core plast isn't beefy enough to hold up the appendage and have it moving all the time, so you have to have some sort of support behind it. Once you have the location of the pivot point and you build your frame, you simply drill all the way through the frame, take a little epoxy glue and glue one of these nylon bushings into the hole. You want to make sure that the size of your bolt will fit into the inner diameter of your nylon bushing. Here's a close up of the nylon bushings I use. So when you're attaching an arm to a character that is going to be on the front side, you have to make sure that you attach it in such a way that the bolt is actually firmly attached to the arm so that when the bolt is moved on the back side up and down, the arm moves along with it. So I've taken a bolt with a washer and put it through the front side. Then on the back side, I take another washer, slip it on, I take a nut and screw it down and tighten it up against the arm. That way, when the bolt is spun up and down, the arm moves up and down. So we thread the nut all the way down and we're going to tighten it up. Let's 
so that now when the bolt is moved, the arm moves with it. I'm going to take one more washer, slip it onto the bolt, and that gives us just a little space in order to be able to slide the arm up and down and keeps it from rubbing against the character itself. And if I can reach the back part and spin the bolt up and down, that makes the arm move up and down. If we look at the back side of the character that has the arm attached to the front, here's the bolt that we just put through and you can see that by spinning the bolt up and down it makes the arm move up and down. There are a couple of different types of motors that you can use to animate your figures. The first type is commonly called a reindeer motor. Uh, that's because it's usually found on the white wire frame uh, reindeer that you see out in people's front yards at Christmas time. The reindeer motor uh, has very low RPM, so it, it makes the animation really slow on a character. The second type of motor, and the one that I'm going to be demonstrating today, is a windshield wiper motor. This particular motor uh, and the kit that comes with it came from a website called monsterguts.com. The kit comes with the motor, uh, this little arm that can be put onto the shaft, and it has a power supply that comes with it as well. I think they run somewhere a little bit under $50. What we're going to do is get the motor mounted to the back of the frame using some wire strapping. This strapping can be found at your local hardware stores and it comes in a roll like this. I think it's used for uh, putting pipes up and holding them to uh, floor joists. As you can see, I've got the motor mounted to the back of the frame with the, the wire strapping and it's very solid on there. So just to give you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish, I'm going to plug the motor in and you can see that the arm that is attached to the spindle of the motor is turning around in a circular motion. So what we're going to try to do is turn that circular motion into making the arm move up and down. So that's what we're going to get to next. Now I wish I could tell you that I knew some type of mathematical or scientific formula that uh, told you how to turn this rotating motion into an up and down motion. There might be, but I don't know what it is. I've discovered over the years that I can use some extruded aluminum pieces. Uh, you can find this at your local hardware store. And I'll make a couple of pieces and drill a hole in one end so that I can attach it to the arm that is on the motor. Then I attach the two pieces together and leave a joint that can rotate pretty loose and then the other end will attach to the bolt that is coming through holding the arm. In doing this, like I said, it's a lot of trial and error and when I'm making my pieces I usually drill in a hole at this end, several holes at this end so that uh, I can find out which hole is going to work the best when I attach these two together. And I have to do a certain amount of bending because the arm on this motor is about four inches away from the back of the frame. So I have to make it go from that arm up to this bolt. So I bend the aluminum so that it goes in and meets up with this bolt. So since I animated this particular piece many years ago, I already know that this is going to work. Uh, but it took a long time to get it to work. So what I do is I take a bolt, put it through the back side of the arm that's attached to the motor, then I take a washer, put the washer on, I put on my extruded aluminum piece, and I take another washer and put it on, and then I'm going to use two nuts to hold that in place. And the reason I use two nuts is that when you tighten the nuts against each other, it will hold them in place. So you put the first nut on and get it so that it is fairly close, the washer is fairly close to this extruded aluminum piece, but it still gives it some clearance so that it can uh, dangle and uh, move back and forth freely. So I put the second nut on there and once I hand tighten it so that it touches the first nut, I take 
two uh, wrenches and I tighten those two nuts against each other and that will hold them in place. You can also use a um, nylon nut and that will work just as well. So now we've got this arm attached to this arm but it can rotate freely and we need that movement when we uh, have the motor articulating the arm. So the next thing I need to do is take this end of the two pieces of extruded aluminum and I'm going to attach it to the bolt that comes through from the front side that is holding the arm. You'll notice that I put a longer bolt in here because the original bolt I put in just wasn't long enough. I've also got a nut threaded about an inch down onto the bolt and I'm going to put a washer on followed by the piece of extruded aluminum. Going to take another washer and I'll take a bolt, I mean I'll take a nut and put it on the bolt and hand tighten it down so that it is snug up against the washer and then I'm going to take a wrench after I get it about where I want it to be, the arm that is, I'm going to take my wrench and tighten it down so that this is a good tight connection on this bolt because we need to turn the bolt in order to make the arm go up and down. So once we have our extruded aluminum connected to the arm on the motor and to the bolt up here. We're going to plug it into the power supply. And as this turns around, it uses these two pieces of aluminum that are attached to this bolt and wiggles the bolt back and forth, causing the arm to go up and down. Now if the arm is out of place and it doesn't look right, you can loosen this nut up, reposition the arm, and tighten that nut back down again. And now that I've turned the character back around, you can see that we've got the arm articulating up and down in what looks to be a fairly natural uh, position and a fairly natural track. You notice that uh, our pivot point is about in the shoulder blade area. Uh, you, you don't want to have the pivot point being some down, somewhere down here in the chest or uh, up here in the neck or something like that. So pay attention to where your pivot point is. If you're articulating just the forearm of a character, make sure that the pivot point is right there in the elbow. You tr want to try to make it about as natural as you can. And here's a close-up of the back side of the figure so that you can see how the animation works. Now we're going to turn our attention to the character that has the arm mounted on the back side of the frame rather than the front side. As you can see, the setup is pretty much the same. I've gone ahead and mounted the motor onto the back of the frame. I've used the wire strapping and it is good and solid on there even though I only have one piece of strapping on there. I've got a piece of extruded aluminum coming off of the arm that is on the motor. This will be spinning around, causing this to move around. Again, it is on there freely so that it has a little bit of wiggle in there and it can move freely. And then it is attached up here to uh, the arm. And I've got this on here pretty loosely because uh, I no longer uh, have my characters animated. Unfortunately, the wind out here where I live is so strong that uh, it kind of looked like a horror movie the first year I put it out because the wind was tearing arms off and stuff like that. It didn't look real good. Up here, I've got it attached directly to the arm, the piece of core plast, as opposed to having to connect it to the bolt that is coming through the frame. So uh, I've attached the motor with one piece of the strapping to the frame. It's good and solid. Um, this piece of extruded aluminum will rotate around on the arm as the motor turns causing this piece to move up and down and thus causing the arm to go up and down as well. Oh. 
So if we take a look at the front side of this character, you can see that the arm is articulating up and down on this character just like it was on the other character that had the arm in the front. It's waving up and down. It's kind of in the right place because, again, his face is kind of looking up into the air. His arm is up in the air showing excitement. And uh, that's how you go about animating one of your characters. Now, of course, I was using Coroplast, and it's a lot lighter weight than, let's say, plywood, but the same rules apply. If you would, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments section, and I'll try to get back in touch with you just as soon as I can. And if you decide to make your own animated character, be sure to make it fun.